Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do another special video, and it's entitled The Isley Brothers and What Happened. And what I mean by that is, most of us know the Isley Brothers from those great hits back in the 70s and the 80s, Footsteps in the Dark, Between the Sheets, uh, At Your Best, you know, just to name a few. And unfortunately, uh, it's hard to find any sheet music on one. The Icy Brothers, except for that garbage of a book that Harold Leonard published and put out, where it covers stuff that, because here's the thing with certain books that I handle, and unfortunately, uh, like the Icy Brothers, the majority of us, especially black people, we know the great hits from back in the day. Uh, the, the, the crossover hits that white people are familiar with is like Shout and some other stuff. And the majority of the stuff that's on the Harold Leonard book is from that era. Stuff that, uh, you know, crossover uh, group know about, but not the, the hardcore stuff that got them famous. So it's unfortunate that uh, we're not represented even in our own work. Because another example of that is, uh, as you know, I'm a huge Rick James fan. And uh, the, the one of the last times he came to Chicago, they had a big write-up in the paper, and it said Rick James and the Stone Canyon Band. And uh, as most of us know, uh, Rick James' band was the Stone City Band. Stone Canyon Band was Ricky Nelson's band. So I'm like, how did this get past all these proofreaders and get printed? So apparently, you know, the people that were in charge knew nothing about R&B music. So it's unfortunate that, uh, kind of like that with the IG Brothers, but getting back to, you know, the, 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 the theme of the, of the video, or of this video, as far as what happened. Because, uh, again, the IG Brothers are known for those great ballads back in the 70s, and as I learned to tab their songs, I really appreciate them even more because their songwriting is just exquisite, kind of like Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's a beautifully written, beautifully structured stuff, not just three chords thrown together. And, you know, when I tab this stuff, uh, the structure is just beautiful. Changes, uh, modulation, uh, nice uh, augmented chords that fit, you know, the melody. And I recently done some uh, some IG Brothers stuff, which is now only Ronald Isley, the lead singer, and Ernie Isley on guitar. And the majority of the stuff that I did, I realized this, that the majority of the songs now are just two chords. You know, and, and, and the reason being is it's the writing, because I believe R. Kelly is doing a lot of their stuff now. And R. Kelly is one of the masters of just three chords. And not to say that three chords songs are bad, because they're not. But you got to look at it from a, a theory standpoint. The more chords you have, the more the, the melody can breathe. Because I gave the analogy of this. Uh, if you're only given three words to, to express yourself, you don't do a good job of expressing yourself. As opposed to somebody give you a telephone book with 3,000 words and they say, go to town. It's the same thing with melody with the chords. So, uh, unfortunately, the majority of these songs now are just two chords rocking back and forth. And it's usually minus seven chords just rocking back and forth. God damn it. Hello? Goodbye. Yeah, the majority of these songs are just two chords rocking back and forth, and usually it's minus seven chords. And, uh, you know, I recently kind of discovered that the majority of the, uh, the IG Brothers stuff is like that, when it's like they came from an old school way of writing beautiful songs, so why now there's only two chords? And here is kind of my theory, because uh, you can kind of determine when you, because I talked about this in another video where you can uh, look at the, the pattern of people and how they write in the chords that they use. And Babyface is a good example. You can usually tell Babyface productions because there's usually a great B section, it has a bridge, it's very well written and structured and everything. And back in the day, the IG Brothers wrote those kind of songs. And I believe one of the, the main contributors of the writing back then was Chris Jasper, who was the, the keyboard player, which is their cousin. And I believe Rudolph and Kelly wrote a lot of that stuff too. Uh, because I noticed when uh, Isley, uh, Casper, I, uh, when the IG brothers are around, uh, Ernie Isley, Marvin Isley, and Chris Jasper went out on their own, uh, their style, of the, the IG brothers style went with them. Because I'm, I'm listening to the, the, the music, the chorus and stuff, and it's like, okay, it's just like 
you know, when they were with the IG brothers. So it leads me to believe that Chris Jasper was a, a, a pivotal point or a main uh, point in writing because now since, you know, Chris Jasper is no longer with them, it's just those two are Ernie and Rhino. It's these uh, today's types of songs where it's just uh, two chords rocking back and forth. And it's just so unfortunate because, again, we know the IG brothers from those great monumental hits. And it's like, uh, you guys went from this to this. And, you know, one reason is money. You know, uh, you continue, you know, the trend because you want to constantly stay there on, you know, in the mainstream and get paid. But it's just, a, it's a shame that, you know, I, when I think of the, the IG brothers, I think of all those guys as opposed to just, just Ronald and Ernie these days, you know, singing two chord songs. Because as we know, Ernie, I actually, to me, my personal opinion is one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived. One of the greatest, not the greatest, because if I say that, I get a whole bunch of comments about what about these other guys? But I think he's up there with the, the other guys as far as one of the greatest guitar players that ever lived. And they utilize his, his skills back in the day. If you listen to the stuff that they do today, he's solo and kind of in the background. And still, uh, they giving him a couple of bars in between the verses to cut loose. You know, so even the arrangements has changed, for, unfortunately, too. But I just noticed that, and I just thought I would do a video as far as the changing of the, of the song structure. And it's obvious that uh, when this certain person left, Chris Jasper, that the, the writing changed. Because again, if you go back to the 70s and the early 80s stuff, and uh, you write out the chords, they're, they're beautifully written in structure. Uh, but the stuff that the, the Ronald Isley and, and Ernie Isley, you know, quote unquote, the Isley brothers are doing that, it's just that R. Kelly thing, you know, where they just rocking back on forth on two chords, you know. So I just thought I would do a video on that because I think it's important for, you know, the young people to realize how things were musically in the R&B field versus now. And I'm not trying to, you know, uh, be negative about the stuff now because I respect the young guys and what they're doing, but it's unfortunate that, you know, just a lot of it is kind of diminishing and it's like the finished product is not what it used to be. Because again, our rock counterparts are still rocking. These guys are still in their mama's basement playing instruments and learning to do their thing. Now our, our young black guys, they don't play instruments. They're just making beats. And I'm not disrespecting making beats, but, you know, you can do so much more if you learn how to play an instrument and make beats. Because if you learn how to play an instrument, you can understand how to make beats even more. You know, because uh, I look at myself as a multi-musician, but my main forte, believe it or not, is songwriting. That's my first thing, and that's my bread and butter. The guitar playing is good, the bass is good, the drums is just to keep, you know, the meter and keep the time. And uh, I don't, you know, profess to be a super great drummer, but I get the job done when we playing in our band. But when you learn to play different instruments, you're able to write better because you can relate, you know, as far as what would the bass player do because you play bass as well. What would the keyboard player do because I play keyboards too as well. Uh, what would the drummer do, you know, you know, because you play a little drums yourself. So that's why it's good to kind of pick up some extra instruments because once you master one like the guitar, it's not that difficult to play bass at that point because you kind of get your dexterity going and now you're only working with four string versus six, you know. So uh, it kind of evolves naturally as far as I'm curious about this other, other instrument or these other instruments now since I can play these other ones well. And again, it makes you a much better songwriter when you have an idea of the other instruments within that, that, that circle, you know. So just thought I would put together something as far as something interesting regarding the changes and styles of the, of the IG Brothers versus then versus now. So I'm going to sign off now. Until next time, take care. And as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel.